Tja. Welcome to Waverley Station in Edinburgh. It's, uh, it's 8 o'clock in the morning and we're just about to catch the 10 past 8 train to London. And the train we're catching is no ordinary train, nor is this an ordinary journey. We're taking part in the most exciting rail journey from Edinburgh to King's Cross in 30 years. It's also going to be the slowest because it will take a steaming 12 hours for us to travel from Edinburgh to London. And that's because we're travelling on this, the Blue Peter Special. Blue Peter is a Class A2 Pacific locomotive built in Doncaster, and 1998 is a special year for both it and the programme. Not only is it our 40th birthday, it's the locomotive's 50th. Our route was to take us via Berwick-on-Tweed, Newcastle, Darlington, York, Doncaster, Retford, Newark, Grantham, Peterborough, Stevenage, and finally, after 392 miles, King's Cross Station in London. The driver's name is John Finlinson, the fireman is Paul Kane. Also on the footplate, we've got Peter Kirk from the English, Scottish and Welsh Railways and Terry Newman from the North East Locomotive Preservation Group. Now, because of rules and regulations, we can't actually travel on the footplate, but we've got some nifty technology. We've got mini cameras here set up outside, that's the front view, and also on the footplate where Peter Kirk is now. Hopefully he can hear me. Peter, can you hear me all right? Yes, Stuart, I can hear you. Good stuff. How is the 532 going at the moment? Uh, Blue Peter's doing fine. Uh, everything's going very well. How important is this journey to steam enthusiasts? Uh, this journey is very important because it proves that we can run uh, this type of train uh, along with the modern high-speed trains and that everyone can enjoy the sight, sound and smell of these fantastic heritage locomotives. And so you can certainly smell it here in the carriage. How fast are we going at the moment? Uh, currently we're doing about 65 miles an hour. It's very noisy. It's very hot at the moment. It's almost burning my legs from the firebox. <laughs> I was going to say, we've, don't get too close to that fire. Yeah, we have a huge fire on at the moment, uh, and the firemen will be getting ready shortly to uh, stoke up even further to go up the hill to Grant's house. Peter when it came on the programme and it was done and my children have watched it as well so it's a, an engine we know very well so it's great to actually travel behind it at long last isn't it? It's just, just fun going on the steam trains I just like steam trains. Do you think they're more interesting than modern day trains? Yeah you yeah, get to see the puffs of smoke going across the window. Now Morris you've been involved in the preservation of the 532 is she going to make it today on this journey without any breakdowns? This is the big question. Well, today is the longest journey Blue Peter is ever going to make. And uh, it's going to be an endurance test for the engine, the support crew and the footplate crew. But uh, I think with all the preparations that are being carried out, she'll definitely make it. Ever 
since the Blue Peter was first abandoned in a siding in Warrington in 1966, we followed her progress closely from scrap metal to gleaming mainline locomotive. The presenter was Peter Purvis. When I first saw her, she still had her British Rail number, 60532. But the state of the outside was nothing to what I found when I managed to get the smoke door open. The door itself didn't look too bad, but lying out in a field completely unprotected meant that Blue Peter had become a mass of rust. By 1970, she was gleaming as presenters Valerie Singleton, John Noakes and Peter Purvis renamed her. moment had come and I pulled the golden cord. Following this trip to the Birmingham Steam Museum in Tisley in 1974, years of idleness followed and another restoration was urgently needed. The North Eastern Locomotive Preservation Group took charge of Blue Peter in 1986. They slaved for five years to restore her, and this is how they did it. In 1992, Diane Louise Jordan renamed her again. And now for the moment that I and all Blue Peace fans have been waiting for. So let's see if I can get this right. Yo, Blue Peter. Only 18 months ago, Romana had her chance to ride on the footplate with Morris Burns. This makes it go more efficient. Can you wind it that way a little bit? On a long journey like the King's Cross run today, 60532 Blue Peter needs plenty of stops like this one at Berwick-on-Tweed to take on extra water. In the old days, they used to scoop it up from troughs between the rails as they went along. Today, it's all done using a water lorry. Let's go over here and talk to Terry for the Preservation Society because he's just having a, a look here at uh, the wheels and everything. Terry, good morning. how are you all right? Very well, thanks. Good. How is she looking? Very well at the moment. That's good. With a good run down. Every time we stop, we like to have a check around and make sure everything's nice and cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the moment, we're OK. Uh, permission to touch this? Oh, yes. yes. No problem it's at all. It's still a bit warm, actually. It's still a bit warm. So, about you, but I think there's nothing like a good sing-song on a long journey. Yeah, meet the Lightning Lads. Now, hopefully, I'll get this right. Duncan, Lee, Tim, and Rob. There we are, and they're also winners of the Young Quartet Trophy. So, um, do you reckon you could teach a novice like me? I'm singing the highest part, so right. follow me. Uh, your little note-finding Yeah, just okay. make sure we're singing the right pitch. Wait for us all to come in. All right, but I'll do it with you. Okay. Hello. 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 Time. 
1882 Gladstone locomotive on this amazing turntable. Oh, tell you what, the Gladstone might not be steaming, but I certainly am. Diane, come and help me. Did people really used to do this on them by themselves? Mostly, yes. God. Of course, we do cheat a little these days and use the electric motor. Electric motor, there's an electric motor. And yeah. I'm doing it like this. Thanks for nothing, you kept that quiet, didn't you? Where's the electricity? Oh. <laughs> now this is more like it. This little beauty doesn't need a turntable because it's got two fronts and faces both directions at the same time. I bet you don't know what this is. It's actually had me confused for a while because it's got a screw top, so it's obviously meant to hold liquid of some kind, but it's not a drinking bottle because it's far too big for that. Now, the clue actually lies in the fact that back in Victorian times, train carriages were really cold because there was no heating on board. So passengers would actually hire these, have them filled with hot water, and then they could put their feet on them. So there you have it, one Victorian foot warmer. 